Jakarta, Indonesia's capital, is one of the fastest sinking cities in the world. Over the past few decades, parts of the city have been sinking at an alarming rate, up to 25 centimeters per year in some areas. If no action is taken, estimates suggest that a third of Jakarta could be underwater by 2050. This ongoing crisis has prompted the Indonesian government to take an extraordinary step, constructing a massive seawall to protect the city and its millions of residents. This project, known as the Giant Seawall Jakarta, or the National Capital Integrated Coastal Development NCICD, plan, is one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects ever undertaken in Southeast Asia. But why is Jakarta sinking? And will the sea wall truly solve the problem? The problem of Jakarta's sinking is multifaceted, with both natural and human causes contributing to the crisis. The city is built on swampy land, originally a mix of marshes, wetlands, and river basins. This low-lying geography makes the ground naturally unstable, particularly when subjected to the weight of modern urban development. Large buildings, roads, and other infrastructure add significant pressure to the already soft, compressible soil, exacerbating subsidence over time. Compounding this natural vulnerability is the overextraction of groundwater. Jakarta's water infrastructure has not kept pace with its rapid urbanization and population growth. Many areas of the city lack access to a reliable piped water supply, forcing residents and industries to pump groundwater for their daily needs. The withdrawal of groundwater creates empty spaces underground, causing the land above to compress and sink. This phenomenon, known as land subsidence, has been recorded in Jakarta for decades but has intensified with the city's explosive expansion. In some areas, the ground is sinking at a rate of 10 to 25 centimeters per year, one of the fastest rates observed anywhere in the world. The sheer scale of this problem is staggering. Currently, around 40% of Jakarta lies below sea level. This makes the city extremely vulnerable to flooding, even without heavy rainfall or storm surges. During high tides, seawater can breach the existing coastal defenses, inundating low-lying neighborhoods. The combination of natural land subsidence and human-induced factors means that some parts of Jakarta could sink by several meters in the coming decades if no action is taken. Adding to the complexity is Jakarta's unique location. The city sits at the confluence of 13 rivers, including the Siliwang, which flow into Jakarta Bay. These rivers play a crucial role in draining water from surrounding areas, but they also pose a significant flood risk. During periods of heavy rainfall, often associated with the monsoon season, the rivers can overflow, inundating large parts of the city. Poor waste management further complicates the situation, as clogged drains and waterways reduce the river's ability to carry excess water out to sea efficiently. Urban development along riverbanks has also disrupted the natural flow of water. Informal settlements and poorly planned construction have encroached on floodplains, reducing the city's capacity to absorb and channel floodwaters. Combined with the sinking land, these factors mean that Jakarta faces not just localized flooding but also widespread inundation that can paralyze the city's economy and infrastructure. While these challenges are severe, they are not insurmountable. Addressing Jakarta's sinking problem requires a multi-pronged approach, combining improved water infrastructure, better urban planning, and large-scale engineering projects like the giant seawall. However, questions remain about whether such measures can fully mitigate the risks, particularly as the city continues to grow and place further strain on its already fragile foundations. Flooding is not a hypothetical scenario for Jakarta, it's an annual reality. In January 2020, severe floods displaced over 60,000 residents and claimed dozens of lives. During such events, economic activity grinds to a halt, and the costs of recovery can run into billions of dollars. To address this existential threat, the Indonesian government, in partnership with international agencies and consultants, began developing the Giant Sea Wall Jakarta project. The idea was first proposed in 2008 and has since evolved into a comprehensive coastal defense and urban development plan. The NCICD plan is divided into multiple phases. The first phase, already underway, involves strengthening the existing coastal defenses by repairing and upgrading 120 kilometers of sea dikes along the northern coast of Jakarta. These dikes are designed to protect the most vulnerable areas from immediate flooding risks. 
The second phase focuses on constructing an outer seawall in Jakarta Bay. This massive structure, which will stretch 32 kilometers, is designed to form a barrier between the city and the Java Sea. The wall will not only act as a flood defense, but will also create an enclosed reservoir to regulate water levels and prevent tidal flooding. The third and most ambitious phase involves transforming the area behind the seawall into a new urban development zone. This reclaimed land, shaped like a Garuda, the mythical bird symbolizing Indonesia, will include residential areas, business districts, and green spaces. However, the focus of this phase has shifted in recent years due to concerns about feasibility, cost, and environmental impact. The construction of the giant seawall is a feat of engineering. Once completed, the outer seawall will be one of the largest of its kind, built to withstand extreme conditions, storm surges, and other challenges. Engineers are using a combination of reinforced concrete and advanced materials to ensure its durability over several decades. However, the project has not been without controversy. The cost is staggering, estimated at over $40 billion. For a developing nation like Indonesia, this represents a significant financial burden. Much of the funding comes from international loans and partnerships, raising concerns about long-term debt sustainability. Critics also point to the social and environmental impacts of the project. Thousands of fishermen and coastal communities depend on Jakarta Bay for their livelihoods. The construction of the seawall and the proposed land reclamation could disrupt ecosystems and displace residents. Environmental groups warn that altering the natural coastline could have unintended consequences, such as changes in sedimentation patterns and harm to marine biodiversity. There are also questions about whether the seawall addresses the root causes of Jakarta's sinking. While the wall may provide temporary relief from flooding, it does not solve the underlying issue of land subsidence. Without significant investments in improving public water supply infrastructure and reducing groundwater extraction, parts of the city will continue to sink, potentially rendering the seawall ineffective in the long term. The Indonesian government acknowledges these challenges and is working on complementary measures. Efforts are underway to expand piped water services and encourage industries to switch to alternative water sources. The government has also launched public awareness campaigns to reduce groundwater usage. In parallel, there are plans to relocate the national capital to East Kalimantan on the island of Borneo. This ambitious relocation project, announced in 2019, aims to reduce the strain on Jakarta and ensure the continuity of government operations in the event of a major disaster. However, Critics argue that relocating the capital does not eliminate the need to protect Jakarta, a city that remains home to over 10 million people and serves as Indonesia's economic hub. For Jakarta, the battle against the sinking is far from over. The giant sea wall represents hope, but also a stark reminder of the challenges ahead.